Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. And we praise your holy name because you are the mighty Savior. There is no God that can deliver after your sword. That king cried out, Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve day and night, able to deliver you? Daniel said, O oh, king, the Lord whom I have served have delivered me. Father, you are the great deliverer. As many people as are gathered in this service today, let that uncommon deliverance power, the kind that released the children of Israel from the land of bondage, the kind that disgraced Goliath completely, let that deliverance power be released for the sake of your children here today. Any situation that is pushing anybody to the wall, any situation that is arresting the peace of anyone here, by your great deliverance power, by that great deliverance power that was wrought on the cross of Calvary, and you declared at the end of it, it is finished. Let that deliverance power be released now in the name of Jesus. Let it be released. Let it be released. Let it be released. Let it be released. Let it be released, it be released. in the name of Jesus. This morning, open our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. As you take our Bibles, if we don't finish what we are saying here this morning, we shall continue next week by the grace of God. Glory be to the name of the Lord. This morning, we are looking at 21 mysterious curses. 21 mysterious curses and it is good for you to be very very attentive so that when the time comes when I say begin to break them so you understand what you are doing 21 mysterious curses right from the book of Genesis curses began their action God actually was the first cursor and as that began to happen, other things began to follow suit. In the book of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, Proverbs 26, 2, it said, As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, the curse, curseless, shall not come. That's Proverbs 26, 2. Now in the book of Revelation, the very last book in the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, Revelation 22, the very last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 22, verse 3. It says this. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and the servant shall serve him. And there shall be no more curse. Before that time, the curses will rage and rage and rage. By the time we come, when the new heaven and the new earth comes in, there will be no more curse. But right now, these are things we need to contend with. A curse is a terrible thing. And nobody likes to be cursed. Because a curse is the opposite of blessing. A curse is a phrase or a sentence. A, a phrase or a sentence of evil pronounced on somebody or something. The words may be in forms of punishment, destruction, rejection, suffering, defeat, barrenness, limitation, and all kinds of terrible things. A curse is something expressed claiming or calling for some form of adversity or misfortune to befall somebody. A curse is an appeal or an evil prayer for evil or misfortune to punish a person. Therefore, more than any other power that has killed human beings, a curse is a killer that has killed human beings with terrible violence. And the Bible has almost 161 references to curses alone. A curse will be working against a person or a group of persons. They don't know what they are doing. A curse will be canceling the blessing of somebody. And any time a person is struggling with something, struggling with it, 
you can't master it, you don't understand it, you are likely to be walking against a curse. Somebody under a curse will be greeted with failure where others are succeeding. He will teach others to pass, but he himself will fail. It is a terrible thing when a man is under a curse. Somebody under a curse will find easy things very, very difficult. The purpose of curses is to punish an offender or to cause defeat in life, to cripple one's destiny, to make a person useless, to bring death or destruction, or to hinder people's progress. Purposes of curse is to cause premature death or strange death, is to bring disappointment, or is to make poor, or to make a person suffer lack. The purpose of a curse is to scatter blessings, to limit abilities, to reduce somebody's position or circumstances, or to continue to pollute future generations. A lot of people are struggling with forces they cannot master, they cannot understand now. They don't understand why things are not working the way it should work. They have tried to understand what's going on here, but they don't understand it. But one thing is certain in scripture. There are some people that cannot be cursed. Numbers 23, 23 tells us, Say, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. You cannot curse those that God has blessed. You cannot curse those who carry the presence of God. You cannot curse those who walk in obedience to God. You cannot curse those who live a righteous life. You cannot curse those kind of people. The only time those people can be open to curses is if they backslide or they put their hand into sin. When a person is under a curse, person labors without results walks like an elephant and hits like an ant the person will have all kinds of health problems there will be unexplainable pain and sorrow hardened poverty that no matter what money you put in it still results in poverty sicknesses that defy medicine mysterious accidents lack of favor general backwardness the person will be pushed to a point where he will be tired of life because the person is under a curse. The person will be getting late for important assignments and all kinds of terrible dreams of backwardness, backwardness will begin to happen. The curse is an invisible hand that determines the destiny of man. As a matter of fact, and to be quite honest with you, when you study the races of the world, there is really no difference in races only different outworking of curses. Let's look at some of these mysterious curses so that we know where we are going this morning. But my prize is, if you are here this morning and you are laboring under any curse, whether you know about it or you don't know about it, it's conscious or it's unconscious, by the power in the blood of Jesus, those curses must be broken this morning. That amen is very weak. That amen is still very weak. When you understand the battle, is that you can fight. Only a, a useless soldier will get to the war front, carry his gun, and you don't even know what you are shooting. Number one mysterious curse is what is known as the curse of the powerless you have done something to somebody who could not fight you back the person keeps quiet he's not fighting back he's not saying anything the curse of the powerless has potent strength so as you are here this morning have you ever cheated anyone who has no power to fight you back have you ever done something to somebody and the person is in no position to fight you back because you have overall power there is a curse that follows that and it's called the curse of the powerless a man slept with the housemaid first time he aborted the pregnancy slept with the housemaid again second time he aborted the pregnancy slept with the housemaid third time he aborted the pregnancy 
Meanwhile, the wife at home did not know that the husband was doing all this kind of rubbish. This Alsep cannot say no. She needs the money, she needs the job, she's a small girl, she doesn't know her left from her right. He just takes the girl, put the girl in the car, says, this girl has malaria. You take the girl to the doctor, but you will have told the doctor what to do. Now one day, this same man was in the car with his own three children. And a trailer just ran across them from the back. All three children gone. The curse of the powerless. And the three children he had removed had now backfired. That's what we call the curse of the powerless. The house had no power to fight. But that curse is always released into the atmosphere. We must understand these things, beloved. Because this may be what you'll be battling against. In this situation, you need repentance. You need to confess that sin to the Lord and then break the curse of the powerless over your life. The curse of the powerless. I pray that anybody under such curse in the meeting of this morning shall be set free in the name of Jesus. You shall be set free. 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 You shall be set free in the name of Jesus. Two. There is a curse of backwardness. The curse of backwardness. Somebody looks at her and says, I will not allow you to rise above this given limit. Some fathers have said that to their children. Colleagues have told people in the place of work, I will not allow you to get beyond this limit. And the, the, the thing starts like that. And it keeps going. Somebody told a woman, say, I will not allow you to have a normal child. So a curse of backwardness and limitation issued against a fellow woman. So the woman had the first baby. They say the baby has a hole in the heart. And she struggled and struggled. They're looking after the baby day and night. They have sleepless nights. She got pregnant again. Second baby was born. The eyes were open, but the baby could not see. She, so she had this hole in the heart baby to look after. And now a blind child. Then she got pregnant again. And this time... It was even more horrible. Baby born, deaf, dumb, cannot sit, cannot walk. That is what brought her to the mountain of fire. She started prayer. There is one prayer that was given to her that the prayer was called bringing judgment. So she started praying that prayer. She hadn't prayed for a week. When the older sister of her husband came with three eggs, she said, forgive me, forgive me. I issued a curse on you using these three eggs. Each egg representing each child. So, the minute you take in, I issue a curse on the egg and I bury it. And that is what, that is what has affected all the three children. This curse of backwardness will make people to run around in circle. Can you close your eyes and raise up your right hand to the heavens with a voice that roars like thunder? Every curse of backwardness. Fighting my destiny. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. There are people here this morning who need to pray. Masapata katara bo kontia. Ribo saponde keye bo shenteraba. Jesus name we pray well we have not started praying yet you don't understand some of the things I've talked to you about this morning might have been around 100 years 200 years a curse of backwardness once the attack starts will grab the person and throw the person down it will capture failure in the midst of certain success Gehazi was a wonderful example he will have been the most powerful man in the Old Testament. But he ended up with a curse of backwardness. It is also called the curse of the fallen eagle. Or the curse of the grounded star. I'm praying for somebody here. That any power assigned to shoot down your eagle. Any power assigned to pull your star to the ground. Any power assigned to trample upon your destiny. 
within the next 24 hours we bury them by fire let your amen roar like thunder let your amen roar like thunder let your amen roar like thunder in the name of jesus number three is the near success curses near success curses a person moves close to an interesting breakthrough then something goes wrong and the success is lost the almost dear curses almost there but not their curses these curses have destroyed so many people there may be somebody in the service this morning who is noticing this evil trend at any time you are close to something wonderful something triggers and there's confusion and you don't get there beginning from this morning that pharaoh that you have been seeing you shall see them no more 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 in the name of jesus it was many years ago in this country some of you might have heard me sharing this <laughs> i was a small boy at that time there was a wrestler a wrestler he wrestles the name is johnny kwango johnny kwango is an expert at using his forehead to smash the opponent's face and nose he's the king of headbutts he's used head to bash somebody johnny kwango johnny kwango was in the final of a, a wrestling match he was to fight a white man johnny kwango is black immediately they said round one johnny kwango just moved in grabbed the white man by his two hands and with his forehead beam 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 he did it almost 50 times blood from the nose of the white man the white man fell down that was all johnny kwango had to do was just to stand by and watch all he had to do was to just stand by and watch but he didn't do that the referee was counting one two instead of waiting for the referee to at least finish the counting and see whether the man will stand up johnny kwango went and climbed the rope and then lifted himself up to smash himself on the man again to finish the man totally why there is he counting for some reason the man who was in pain the pain made him to turn in the canvas johnny kwango missed the man he was to smash he smashed his own head on the ground so two wrestlers on the floor and the referee was still counting <laughs> started counting again to see who will stand up first johnny kwango is out the white man is out as man was counting one two three the white man who was in pain and opened his eyes he saw that kwango had knocked himself out he now started struggling to stand up before 10 the man struggled to stand up even when they were saying the man was the winner he was still shaking there was a man close to the edge of success he knocked himself out any power that wants you to die before your success before your breakthrough no matter who put them together no matter who gather them within the next 24 hours let them be buried in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus shout this loud and clear every curse walking at the edge of my breakthroughs backfire in the name of Jesus Master Party La Catenda Yabo Shente Maribo Soponde Ke Yabo Shente Rabaraba Riba Sapia le Katanda. Something is happening to somebody over there. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your seat, beloved. For the curse of slavery. The curse of slavery. When a person is laboring under this curse, 
the person is tormented and harassed by the spirit of slavery and servitude. The person is always treated as a houseboy or housemaid, wherever he or she goes. When there is promotion, will be the last to be promoted. When he's doing where they rank him the lowest, it will be underrated. Always reduced in honor. No matter the struggle the person puts in, he finds himself in the zero position. In their dream, they find themselves serving others, serving others, serving others. They themselves never been served. The curse of slavery. Some people are in the Bible. The Bible issued a curse on them and said, They shall be hewers of wood and fetchers of water. There is a curse that can limit a man to the level of a slave. This is a very serious matter. There is a curse that can make a man with a PhD certificate begin to work with his school certificate papers because there is no employment. It's a curse of servitude. A curse of slavery. I pray once again that every power assigned to demote your destiny shall be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Five. There is a curse of suicide unnatural death and premature death Samuel told Eli that God said to the family of Eli in 1st Samuel chapter 2 that there shall not be an old man in thine house forever and that is a serious curse I pray that anyone laboring under that kind of curse shall be set free in the name of Jesus six there is a curse of unexplainable poverty. Can't just explain it. Talented, educated, but he has a return ticket in his hand to the palace of poverty. Have a look at your family where you are sitting down, beloved. Have you noticed that no one ever prospers in that family? That no one in that family ever made it to anything tangible in life? Do you notice a legendary poverty along your family line? Is it a case of acidic poverty? Then there is a curse at work. And I pray that all such curses shall be broken today in the name of Jesus. Seven. There is a curse of mysterious infirmities. Mysterious infirmities. Recurring and devastating sicknesses. Sicknesses that are never diagnosed. Something is eating up the person. Nobody knows what is eating up the person. Doctors look and cannot see anything. Sometimes instead of treating tuberculosis, they treat for malaria and the person dies. Somebody is suffering from ulcer, they say it's cancer, they treat him for the wrong thing, he dies. I pray that every hidden infirmity, clever and intelligent sicknesses, they shall depart from the hiding place. In the name of Jesus. Number eight. There is a curse of stagnation stagnation diligent hard-working honest but yet no corresponding reward difficulty in moving to the next level in their destinies there's a spiritual rope or a glue tying such people to the one spot it is also called the curse of the evil bus stop i am praying for somebody here that rope that the enemy is using to tie you down to the same spot shall catch fire shall catch fire shall catch fire in the name of Jesus number nine the curse of a prophet dangerous kind of curse it is a disaster to have the curse of the prophet working against you Elisha cursed some young men and wild beasts devoured them that's why I preach to members of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Mission that, that you should never join people to speak against any man of God. Leave him with God to deal with him. Don't put in your own mouth. Prophets in the Bible were very dangerous men. They, they were prayed with curses and blessings. Depending on which side you fall. If you come to them, if, if you are qualified for blessing, they bless you. If you come to them for another thing and that is not right, they curse the person. The prophets of the Old Testament have curses and blessings in their pockets. It was the same Elijah who said, your cruise of oil will not run dry. 
until the Lord brings rain to the land. The same Elijah was the person that told the servants of the king. So go tell the king that he is sick, but he will not come down from that sickness, he will die. The same person. So that's how they operate. That's why I'm praying for somebody. Any curse working to replace your blessing with misfortune shall be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> 10. Marital vow curses. Marital vow curses. Every deception in marriage, maltreatment, beating of wife brings a curse. Dumping of wives for younger ones or more beautiful ones, according to your estimation, brings a curse. Young ladies, you know a man is married, and you see go after the man in immorality, you issue a curse on your life. Leaving your husband because the husband does not have enough money to marry a richer person, you bring curses upon your head. Young ladies who have broken other people's homes, you bring a curse upon your life. You, that young lady, each time a man quarrels with his wife because of you, there is a rain of curses that will come upon you. All playboys or playmen, whatever you call them, are cursed. Remember, no amount of prayer or deliverance can break the laws of God. You need to repent and stop that kind of life. Some ladies now are suffering from the curses issued against them when they were going about with a married man whose wife was a witch you thought that witch woman did not see you moving about with her husband you are a liar you lie they know so they just walk on your own destiny and thoroughly destroy it and then you start going for deliverance later the curse of marital vows Anyone breaking that marital vow, you come under a curse. Doesn't matter where the marriage took place, whether it's in your village, in the church, in the court, as far as it qualifies for a marriage, once you break it, it invites a curse. So that's why you must think deeply, very well, before you come to the church of God at the altar and they say, Will you take this one? And you say, I will. 11. The curse of covered sin. Any sin that you cover up curses your prosperity. So he that covered his sin shall not prosper. It curses your spiritual prosperity. It curses your financial prosperity. It curses your material prosperity. It curses your health prosperity. So it's not good business to cover up your sin. It curses your prosperity. Twelve. There is a curse of rebellion. That is, you rebel against legally constituted authority. Korah were the children of Reuben, firstborn of Judah. They rebel and there was trouble. Rebellion can make your prayer to return to your chest. All rebellious people in the Bible died including Ahitophel and Judas. The terrible thing about the cause of rebellion is that if you don't repent, it leads to death. I pray that the Lord will help you if you are under that kind of curse. Thirteen is the curse of sex abuse. This curse of sex abuse has destroyed our current generation. There is plenty of sexual looseness around now. Some men, when they pack their briefcase, the first thing they put in the briefcase is condom. Before they would not put their file for the place of work. It invites curses. Using money to abuse the integrity of womanhood invites curses. You have facility to help. You don't want to help unless you sleep with the woman. It invites curses against you. Then you to woman releasing yourself as an object of satisfaction to men invites a curse upon you. Father sleeping with daughters. Son sleeping with mothers. Mothers lying with sons, those invite curses. All these strange kinds of sex, pornography, oral sex, anal sex, prostitution, they bring curses. This is a serious matter. An irrevocable cause will be set into motion when somebody is practicing sexual perversion. The person has to repent and cry to God. Number 14 is the curse of unforgiveness. Curse of unforgiveness. 
Have you failed to forgive anyone? If you don't forgive, tormentors will come after you. Nobody says you should go and become best of friends of everybody. But at least release them at your own level. If not, you will face a prison experience. And this is fighting so many people. Fifteen is the cause of family conflict. Family always fighting. Family conflicts attract curses. While there is conflict within the family, all kinds of terrible things will begin to happen. Serious family conflict without reconciliation can lead to very distressing circumstances. I pray that such families will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Sixteen is the curse of underachievement. Underachievement. The person achieved something, but the thing is completely substandard. Such people, you give them things, those things never grow in their hands. The thing dies in their hands. They have this mystery of the quick loss of abundance. And this is afflicting so many people. As many people as I hear this morning, and you have lost things to the enemy because of the curse of underachievement, you shall repossess them in the name of Jesus. 17, there is this stumbling block curse. Stumbling block. If you make another person to stumble, you make another person to lose their faith in Jesus. The Bible says it's better to hang a stone around your neck and throw you into the sea. If you constitute a stumbling block to somebody's salvation, you attract a curse. A, that curse will lead to a sinking life. 18. There is a curse of satanic objects. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. The Terminus 726 says, Neither shall thou bring an abomination unto thine house, lest thou shall be a casting like it. Let me read it again. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou shall be a cursed thing like it. Objects in our possession can be an open door for curses. Many of us may need to go around our homes and clean up our homes. According to the Bible, if you have a cursed object in your home, you become cursed like it. I remember a man of God when his grandfather died. He inherited these decorative pictures of dragons from his grandfather. Beautiful picture of dragons. Sculptured picture. Very expensive. That's what he inherited. He put it in the house. The man just noticed that beginning from that time that they put it in the house his finances lost dive everything just went down and he began to pray father what is the matter what's going on here father what is the matter what's going on here and the lord said son look at that picture who gave it to you I said my grandfather lord so what is the picture on that thing say a dragon lord now said you are a servant of god what does dragon represent I said, I see. It's the devil. I said, take it out. And immediately he took that picture out and destroyed it. Things began to happen. And improvement came. Pictures can bring an evil aura into your home. All those who say, well, it's our it's culture. It's this. And so you put the bronze head of an idol inside your home. You invite curses into the home. The charms that people carry about. It brings problem into the house. There used to be an aircraft that flies in Nigeria a long time ago that has the head of an idol on the body. I never entered it one day. If it's the last plane, I will walk. It's gone now. The idol that was on the body has eaten it up. Because Bible says it will invite a curse with it. For the same reason. You find that in most places in Mountain of Fire, you don't, in fact, in the whole of Mountain of Fire, you don't find somebody bringing drums to the services. Drumming have their origin in idolatry and idol worship. And this invites all kinds of spirits. Any object used in idol worship, you bring it to your home, will bring trouble to you. Any item that has been used by satanic agents, you, br you bring it to the house, it will bring you harm. The Bible said, Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, 
nor the likeness of anything. Don't even put the image of Jesus in your house because nobody saw him. It's from the imagination of somebody just drawing something. All those astrological symbols, they bring problem into the house. All the regalia of evil societies in your home, it will bring trouble. You should be very careful. All the evil books, books of magic, books of anything that is evil, it's a cursed object. And a cursed object does not just sit idle. It will always bring trouble. So you better carry out an inventory of what you have in the house. 19. There is an inherited curse. Curse that flows in the family. Elisha told Gehazi, leprosy of Neman shall come upon thee and unto his offsprings. So he brought curses to his own family line. 20. Is a communal or territorial curses. By this, we mean curses that affect entire communities. There are places where people are guilty of capturing innocent souls and bury them alive. There are lands where they cut off the head of people that are just strangers and use them for rites, for rituals. Jericho was a wicked city like that. And curses was issued against Jericho. And the land was terrible. It has affected so many people. In any land that is under a curse, the people living there will be affected. That's why in some parts of the country you find that they know nothing good is happening. Because the land is cursed. Particular geographical area under a curse. Just like Jericho in those days. The last but not the least is the curses through embezzling your tithes and offerings. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Say, yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? He says, in tithes and in offerings. He said, yeah, curse with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Failure to pay tithes, failure to pay offering opens the land to devastation. And opens the person up to, to all kinds of devouring spirits. I pray that those who are stealing from God and inviting such curses upon their heads will repent. What do we do this morning? You need a complete repentance. In areas where you need to repent. You need to stop walking in the cursed pathway. You need to cry to the Lord for deliverance. You need to break the yoke of the curse. You need to make restitution where it is necessary. So that these mysterious curses, 21 of them, will not be walking against your destiny. This morning, beloved, we have prayers to pray here. Let's rise up on our feet. And all eyes closed. Let's rise up on our feet. And all eyes closed. But you see, if you are here this morning and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, do so very quickly now by raising up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. For so say that short prayer with me. Immediately we close, just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. All eyes closed. Those who need to repent before the Lord, they have the opportunity to do so now. Right there where you are, bow down your heads and ask the Lord to forgive you of any area in which you have brought a curse upon yourself. Talk to the Lord yourself. There is a purpose for this message. And the purpose is to deliver God's people. But it's good that you do your own part now. You bow down your head, talk to the Lord. A father, forgive me of anything I've done that may open me up for curses. Ask him to forgive you now before we start praying. Amen. Now, prayers to break curses. They are not gentlemen prayers. Prayers to break curses. They are not prayers you joke with. Because if you don't stop the curses, they will eventually stop you. So the principle again is quite clear. Stop them before they stop you. There are people here this morning. If you can pray these prayers, the first thing you are going to notice that you will feel very light. Because the raging demons 
the legal ground of the raging demons will have been removed and what you have found very very difficult before will become easy amen with a loud voice louder than anyone around you sing this song loud and clear it's important that your voice is very loud as you sing this atmosphere clearing song i plead the blood the blood of jesus i plead the blood of let your voice be loud. 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 Ma sopota karibo kosante ya baraba. Ribo sopote kente ya boshen. to ask you to pray. Immediately you begin to pray them. The powers that have decided that you will not move forward will be disgraced. Immediately we begin to pray them. All those witchcraft curses that have been working against you will fold themselves together and go back to the sender. Immediately you begin to pray this prayer. Those areas where the enemy is just busy blocking your way, blocking your way. Their Pharaoh shall drown. <laughs> Silence now. I'm going to pray in the spirit realm. All I want you to do is to carry out your prophetic action by using your hand to clear your own atmosphere upon your head. You clear the air above your head with your two hands. Just begin to clear any evil cloud away from your head. Begin to clear away the cloud of curses Clear away every cloud blocking your heaven. Begin to clear them. Clear them. Pasepoka tara katandia. Ribo soponde ke yabo shente raba kapola basanta. Da ribo sepia li katanda. Li kande yaba. Clear it. Clear it. Clear it. Yes, the powers that have been blocking your heavens. The powers that are blocking the sunlight of blessing to come through to you. The powers that are blocking the rain of blessing from coming through to you clear them away clear them away look at what's happening over there yes clear them away clear them away aha that's the power of god coming upon you right there where you are yes clear them away it's happening that's right
Every power that is converting the heaven over your head to brass. Clyde, 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 now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Silence now. Now that you have done that clearing, you will charge like a lion onto this prayer now. Shout this the way I'm going to shout my own. Lion of Judah! Allah! Change my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Call on the Lion of Judah. Jesus. Bosente ketela kaya boshente raba. Riba sapeli katanda kanda. Manakapola kaya boshente raba. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. You've invited the Lion of Judah. Now listen. Within the next few seconds, the power of God is going to fall on all who are here today. And there's a curse that is keeping you stagnant. There is a curse that is keeping you backward. There is a curse that is keeping you at the tail department. Anything can happen to anybody now. Just focus on Jesus. Those people under that kind of curses, the power of God is going to blow the wind of the Holy Ghost upon you right there where you are. And it's definitely that you may not be able to stand on your feet. But when that wind blows upon you, whatever curse that is keeping you stagnant, keeping you where you should not be, something will snap in the spirit realm and you'll be completely set free. That is the wind of the Holy Ghost blowing up a now. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. That's right. All those who have been tied down by ropes of darkness and have kept you at one spot. Fire of God and the wind of God. Is blowing upon you right there where you are. Yes, that's the wind of the Holy Ghost. Blow up on you again. Aha. Masekatenda ya boshende raba. Ribo setende le katenda ya boshende raba. Now with a loud voice. You will shout this loud and clear. Curses of my father's house. That is troubling my Israel. Can I hear the sisters shouting this loud and clear? Is that the loudest the sisters can shout it? Let your voice be louder than that, sisters. Brothers, let me hear you roaring like thunder. Everybody together now. Pray. In the name of Jesus. Basekatenda kaya boshandaraba. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth.
the power of God in the name of Jesus move thank you Jesus 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 aha 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 Bracket, bracket, bracket. In Jesus' name, we will pray. Silence, silence now. Those people who are here this morning, and you know that you are laboring under parental curses, laboring under witchcraft curses laboring under a force that is pushing you back while you are trying to move just lay your right hand upon your head where you are and keep that hand there wait for the angels that are moving about they will come to you where you are and lay their own hands upon your hands and as they do that the electric current of the holy ghost will flow through your body and the raging demon of that curse will be evacuated completely that's right What's happening? We're here for serious business. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. You have been oppressing her since she's a little child. Now let her go. In the name of Jesus. Shout this loud and clear. Rivers of regret. Dry up. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and decree. Dry it up in Jesus' name. We pray a louder amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. I decree that as those curses have been lifted away this morning, that your children shall experience a new lease of life in the name of Jesus. As a result of the prayers we are praying this morning. Testimony shall abandon your life in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy has put in place to confuse any child of God or to torment any child of God, we bury them now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. All the Pharaoh that you have seen today. You shall see them no more. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace and fellowship.